I'm going to show you how to zero touch provision an Aruba switch with Aruba Airwave. There's a couple things that we need to do to get started. And the first thing is we need to go into our DHCP server and we need to set up option 60 and DHCP option 43. So let's take a look at the DHCP server. So here we are on our Windows. Uh, this is Windows Server 2019. And I'm going to look at my DHCP options. So the first thing I do is um, you set predefined options and the first one is option 60. So let's take a look at that. So all option 60 is, is it's a string that says Aruba Instant AP. And I know we're using switches here, but it uses the same string that the Instant Access Points uses. Uh, so you make a string that is Aruba instant AP, no spaces, and make sure you have um, the letters capitalized just like this, the A, the I, and then the AP. So that is option um, 60. And since I'm creating the option here on the server, you could make that a global option for all your scopes. So you could go in under here on server options and you could make it global. You could go down here and check this box and then it would make it global for all your scopes. If you don't want it for all your scopes, um, so as an example, I'm just uh, doing this on VLAN 1 here. So if I look at my scope options, I have option 60, and I also add it option 43. So you would go in and add option 43 the same way, but let's take a look at option 43. So even though it's binary, you can add in an ASCII string and the format of this string is um, the name of your group. And um, you saw in Airwave, my group is 2930F. And um, then I have a folder. And my folder is called Santa Clara. And notice I did not capitalize the S. Um, if you uh, make these strings and they do not exist, so for example, if this group does not exist and this folder does not exist, when they go into Airwave, they will create this group and this folder. So uh, it's 2930F and then there's a colon. And then here is my folder name, which is Santa Clara. And then there is a comma and then the IP address of the AMP server, 192.168.146.15. And then there's another comma right after it. There's no spaces in any of this. And then Aruba123 is just a password that is used the first time that a device goes into Airwave. Once you accept the first device into that group, then all other um, devices that are using that same password can automatically go into that group. So we're going to jump back over to Airwave and we're going to take a look at some of the things that need to be set up in Airwave for the zero touch provisioning the work. So here we are back in Airwave and there's a couple things we need to set up. So in Airwave, I'm going to go into AMP Setup and I'm going to go to this section here called Automatic Authorization. And what I'm going to say is add new controllers and devices into, and I'm choosing a folder uh, group. So I uh, selected the 2930F group and the Santa Clara folder that I made through DHCP options. And an important thing that you have to do is, by default, these are set to monitor mode. And it says automatically authorize switch mode. So. Uh, by default, these are in monitor mode, so when a new switch comes up on the network and it finds its way uh, into Airwave, it's going to be in monitor only mode um, by default. That's why you want to change this to manage read write, because if it comes in in monitor only mode, it will not change the configuration, it will not get the template pushed to it, and it will not update its code. So we want to make sure that we... Um, Changes manage read write and also down here manage read write for um, any virtual controller modes. And then we want to set all here for um, switches to go into Airwave. So once we have all that, we want to save it. Um, we can also go in if we want to look at some of our firmware 
upgrades. So if we want it, we could allow um, firmware upgrades in monitor only mode. We could allow rebooting of devices and um, we can allow distribution of um, firmware via HTTP. So there's some things that we can set in here. So I'll click Save. And um, what I want to do next is I want to take a look at a group. So I made this group 2930F and that matches the DHCP options, but there are a few things that you want to do. So um, if a switch would come into this group and there was never anything into this in this group before, um, you know, it's not going to get pushed any template or anything, right? Especially if they're all factory defaulted. So what you want to do the first time for this is you want to take a switch and, um, you know, configure that switch the way you want all of your switches to be configured, right? This will be your golden config. And once you have that uh, switch, bring it in the airwave. You don't even have to zero touch provision it if you don't want. Um, another way to do that is you can go in uh, under a switch. So here's an example. I configured this switch. You can see it has a name on it, so it's not default. If I do show run um, structured, you can see uh, some of the configuration in here where I've made some VLANs and I tagged them on interface eight. And you can see I manually added this in the airwave. So you can go in and do, you know, config T and you can do amp dash server and then you put in the IP. IP address of the uh, of the airwave server, the group that you want it to go into, the folder, and the secret. And this switch will then go into your airwave. So you'll see it come in the airwave. Now, I put a little bit of a configuration on here just so I had um, some type of uh, config that wasn't default that I could use as my template. So we'll pretend this is my golden template. And um, so now I brought it into airwave and um, if you click on the little wrench here, you can go and look at the template. So here's my template that came in. If I click on the pencil, I can edit it or I can even just look at this template. So you can see that, um, you know, Airwave is smart enough that it sees a host name and it makes it a variable, so it's not gonna change it. But um, you can see the information that it is gonna push down to all the new switches that come in. Now, if you didn't like this template, you could go back and you could delete it. And then you could fetch a template from another switch um, in here. And you can do other things like if you want to enforce um, a certain version of code and um, you know, you can set these things up here for your templates. So uh, a couple other things is firmware on this group um, enforcing firmware. So you're going to see that the version of code I'm on is um, that I'm enforcing is 1609.0.001 and um, we're going to enforce that. So my new switches do not have this version of code on it. So when we bring them in, they're going to automatically update their code and then reboot. Um, so how did I get the code in here? You could go into device setup and you can go to Upload Firmware and Files. And what I did was I clicked Add, and I told it specifically what model switch I have. And then, you know, you can just put a description in here. And then you can click on Choose File and upload the file off your local computer. And it will be in the repository, and you can then use this as the version of code that you want to enforce on a particular group. So right now we have our group. We have a template on it. We're enforcing code. And um, so right now there's one device in it. Well, it says one device, but one down. Now it's down because uh, that was my original um, uh, template switch that I brought in. So let's bring another switch online and let's bring it uh, right in the airwave. So here I have another switch. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna do an erase start so we know it's a fresh uh, switch and we're going to reboot it and we're going to wait for it to come up.
And one thing I will point out is you could see that the switch was on, if I scroll back a little bit, 1608 code. So since we're enforcing, you can see primary image is 1608 and the secondary is 1603 code. So um, when it goes in the airwave, we are going to enforce uh, the code and upgrade the switch to 16.009. So let's open airwave over here. We'll minimize this a little bit so we can see both windows. And we'll wait for the switch to come up. paused it and I didn't even need to because it was up already so so uh, brand new switch if I do a show run you're gonna see that there is nothing really on this switch if we do a show IP I can see that it got an IP address in my um, here's the, the in my VLAN 1 so it should have got the DHCP uh, options so if I do show amp server I can look and it did learn all of the airwave um, it learned the address the group the folder and the password so it should come right into my airwave and um, it should come online here so we'll wait for it to show up in airwave it's probably gonna take up oh, well it looks like it's there already so we see uh, two total devices So we can see that it's up, and um, one thing it did not do was it did not go, um, let's give it a second here. So it does look like, even though it says uh, manage here, I can see the switch started a reboot on its own. So I'm assuming that it's updating its code. And I can see, yes, it got, 1609001 code so that's good so it automatically did a switch upgrade and we'll see if it gets a uh, configuration so let's just give it a minute I'm not going to pause the video or anything so we can see how long it takes um, for the switch to come up and for airwave to push a config down to it So maybe I'm just not being patient here. Up, oh, it does look like it pulled its config. So I just wasn't patient. Um, it pulled its config and it is now up and it says the configuration is good. So if I go in here and I do a show VLAN, there's my VLANs. So um, this switch auto provisioned, it downloaded its code and it um, uh, ended up pulling a template down. So that's how you can zero touch provision uh, with Airwave.